happy holidays and happy new year. The last devlog was almost a month ago, but I think I've made some pretty good progress. But thank you all for watching this series. This video is sponsored by Machinations.io, but more on that later. In this devlog, the theme is making your player more powerful, or for a slightly more clickbait title, making your character oh godlike or unkillable. Also, stick to the end for some channel updates and some questions I have for you guys. I think one of the most fun parts for games for me is seeing your personal progression and how your power level increases as you get further and further on in the game. Because it's really rewarding and generally fun to be able to absolutely demolish hordes of enemies in a game like They Are Billions or two-shot kill an enemy in League of Legends. But I realize that you have to make this power relative. If you're level 1 and you're fighting a level 1 boar and it takes you 30 seconds to kill it, and then when you're level 20 and fighting a level 20 skeleton and it still takes you 30 seconds to kill it, it might not really seem like you've progressed that much. So since the last devlog, I've really tried to set in solid foundations for player leveling and skill unlocks. If you are new to the devlog series, I highly encourage checking out some of the previous devlogs, but just to remind everyone about the general gist of the game, you're playing as one of several famed heroes battling to conquer the world, sometimes for good, sometimes for evil. Depends on the character. You have 24 hours of in-game time to get more powerful and develop allies before the rest of those other famed heroes try to also conquer the world. So the two main forms of player progression are gaining allies to be more powerful by association and personal player power. I covered the initial questing and relationship system in the previous devlog if you're interested, so I tried to focus on the other progression system for this devlog. The leveling system was fairly easy to implement. You have an experience bar and monsters and quests will grant you a certain amount of experience. Once you level up, your base health and damage will also increase, as well as the XP required for the next level. But for this system, I really had to think about how I wanted the player to be able to level up. I mentioned in the last video that doing quests for NPCs will be one of the main ways to develop a relationship or an alliance. But if you also get experience, then you're kind of progressing in every aspect of the game while only focusing on one. And I don't really know if that's a good system or not. So I I decided to drastically decrease the amount of experience NPC quests give you, emphasis on the NPC, and instead I developed what I call a shrine system. So shrines are statues to powerful gods or entities that you can do quests for also, but instead of developing a relationship with them, they will grant you more personal power and abilities. So this way, you can either do quests for NPCs and they'll in turn help you out when every Everything starts getting invaded or you can go for the shrine quests that will give you all of these godlike powers, but you won't really have any allies to back you up. Or obviously you can do some subset of both. I think this is a pretty good system, at least initially, as I want the player to choose between doing quests for the local townsfolk and developing an army, or simply doing these shrine quests to become a demigod-like character with a bunch of spells. I've yet to add the inventory system, but when I do, I plan to add gear slots for different swords, or different trinkets or consumables that will hopefully spice up the entire questing system as a whole. I've also drastically updated the player UI, and now you can see the health and player profile and level in the top left with their experience bar. In the upper right is a clock, so once a full day elapses, that's when the invasions begin. Additionally, I added an action bar at the bottom, and this is primarily designed for those abilities that I mentioned before. I added one player ability as a test, and I think I like the system so far. And you can see that when it's on cooldown, it's just kind of grayed out. Additionally, I was thinking that each archetype or player character will have one active ability and one passive ability to start off. And then the players that choose to do more shrine quests will unlock more of these personal abilities or enhance the ones they currently have. And one more call out to World of Warcraft that I mentioned in previous videos, a system that I really like is called Torghast. It's in the newest expansion and it's basically a massive tower. And as you move up the tower, you can improve your existing character abilities for that run. It's not perfect, and it can get quite repetitive, but I think the foundations are a good idea to see how powerful your character can actually get. And here's where I am definitely open to suggestions, as I'm still relatively new to game design and development. But from a technical perspective, the ability system works like this. A skill is a scriptable object, with various traits like a cooldown, damage, radius, spell 
spell icon and also a game object. The game object is the actual spell object that holds the spell animation and some other fields. So when you cast a spell, I actually instantiate this game object, let the animation play and do damage, then delete it. That system seemed to work the best as spells can have a drastically different functionality. I also implemented this casting type feature where when you click a spell, you get this little electric bolt icon similar to targeted AOE abilities in games like, again, World of Warcraft or League of Legends, and then you can click on where you want to cast it with your mouse. I'll probably add some other spell mechanics in the future, but again, this is just for the MVP, so I'm really not sure if this is the best system or not for player skills and abilities, but I'm really open to better suggestions, so please leave them in the comments. But balancing these player abilities and unlocks can be quite challenging, which is where today's video sponsor comes in, Machinations.io. Machinations is the game balancing platform in which you can map your entire game, then run simulations to balance different parameters. Let's be honest, game balancing is tough, and trying to model tons of different user behaviors and systems can get really confusing. And you know, I'm a data guy, so Machinations helps you make more data-driven decisions when it comes to game balance and reduce iteration and balancing time by up to 90%. I've mentioned League of Legends a couple times in this video, so here's a really cool simulation of the Hextech chess system in League created in Machinations. There are hundreds of ready-built templates, but you can also quickly build your own using prefab library items. There's a free forever plan, so you might as well give it a shot. Use the link in the description and start designing your own Machinations. Thank you to Machinations.io for supporting the channel. That's mostly what I've accomplished from the last devlog. I think now I'm gonna try to start on how the invasion system might work and maybe add some more NPCs and quests and clean up the overall map a little bit, as well as further mature the shrine system a little bit more. For some channel updates, thank you all for a great year on the channel and really looking forward to the next year and what lies in store for this channel. Additionally, I also thought about maybe starting to stream on Twitch, like a little bit of the game dev process. It would sort of be ad hoc where I kind of just flick on the stream when I'm working on the game because I obviously still work full time so I can't really stick to a you know, persistent schedule on Twitch but you know maybe in the evenings I might switch it on and if you just want to come hang out and chill and we can code let me know if that sounds like something you might be interested in. So consider giving me a follow too. Again thank you all for everything it really really means a lot to see how many people like watching these game dev videos and even some of my other you know less popular tech videos just is really rewarding to see. So thank you guys again. And if you have any suggestions for future videos you might wanna see, comment them down below. Check out machinations.io again in the description below. My name is Michael. We do bad British accents at the end of every video. Check out one of my past videos and my past self would thank you dearly. Check out one of my future videos and my future self would also thank you dearly. That's all from me. Hopefully I see you in another one. Happy holidays, happy new year, Bye bye <laughs>